If you're talking about um, cognitive performance, this could be, actually be very beneficial. The early part of the day is interesting because the um, one thing that's not often discussed is the transition out of sleep. So there's a, a book, um, I think it's called Winston Churchill's Nap, and it's about naps and, and the transition between wake and sleep as a valuable period. A long time ago, someone who I respect a lot was mentoring me said, um, be very careful about bringing in someone else's sensory experience early in the day. Some people have taken this to the extreme. When I was a graduate student at Berkeley, there was a guy um, there, was a professor, was brilliant, odd, but brilliant, um, who was so fixated on this concept that he wouldn't look at faces in the early part of the day mm -hmm. because he just didn't want to anything else to impact him. So when I wake up, I'm very drowsy. I sleep well, but I, I don't emerge from that very quickly. I need a lot of caffeine to wake up and whatnot. But there's this concept of getting the download from sleep, mm -hmm. which is, you know, in sleep, you're, you were essentially expunging the things that you don't need, mm -hmm. the stuff that was meaningless from the previous day. But you were also running variations on these algorithms of whatever it is you're trying to work out in life on short time scales like the previous day and long time scales like your whole life. It's a brain state that would be useless in waking. You wouldn't get anything done. You'd be the person talking to yourself in the hallway or something about something that no one else can see. But in those states, the theory is that you arrive at certain solutions and those solutions will reveal themselves in the early part of the day unless you interfere with them by bringing in Social media is a good example of you immediately enter somebody else's space-time sensory relationship. Someone is the conductor of your thoughts in that case. Allowing the download to occur in the early part of the day and asking the question, am I more in my head or external? am I in more of an interoceptive or exteroceptive mode? And depending on the kind of work you need to do, if it's, it sounds like for you, it's very interoceptive in the end, very you got a lot of thinking going on and a lot of computing going on, allowing yourself to transition out of that sleep state and arrive with those solutions from sleep and plug into the work really deeply. And only then allowing things like music, news, social media, there is a sweet spot, if you will, where the level of internal autonomic arousal, aka stress or alertness, whatever you want to call it, is ideally matched to the speed of whatever challenge you have Got to be it. facing yes. in the outside world. So we all have um, perception of the outside world as exteroception and the perception of our internal real estate interoception. When interoception and exteroception are matched along a couple dimensions, performance uh, tends to increase, tends to be in optimal range. So let's say you're trying to learn something new on the guitar. I'm not saying that being in these super high states of activation are the best place for you to be in order to learn. It may be that you, your internal arousal needs to be at a level where your analysis of space and time has to be well matched to the information coming in and what you're trying to do in terms of performance, in terms of playing chords yeah. and notes and so forth. With the guitar learning, for instance, it might actually be that you want to be almost sleepy, mm -hmm. almost in a uh, kind of drowsy state to be able to, and I don't play music, so I can't, mm -hmm. I'm guessing here, but sense some of the nuance in the chords or the ways that you're, to be relaxed enough that your fingers can follow an external cue. So matching the movement of your fingers to something that's pure exteroception. Mm -hmm. Now, in these cases of high threat where things are coming in quickly and animals and humans need to react very quickly, the higher your state of autonomic arousal, the better, because you're slicing time more finely just because of the way the autonomic system works. And so there is no perfect autonomic state for performance, but I do believe that optimal or peak performance is going to arise when internal state is ideally matched to space time features of the external demands. Thank you.